If you want to learn more about BGP topics, be sure to check out our Juno's Intermediate Routing course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash course slash JIR. But first, pay close attention to this learning bite as this subject appears on the JNCIS service provider and JNCIP enterprise exams. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello and welcome to the BGP Authentication Learning Bite. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After successfully completing this learning byte, you'll be able to explain how BGP authentication works and be able to configure BGP authentication and verify the results. Let's start by discussing how BGP authentication works. BGP authentication allows all of the protocol exchanges that happen between a pair of neighbors to be authenticated. The way it works is you as an administrator will define an authentication key that is used between a pair of peers to authenticate BGP traffic. For example, if a neighbor wants to send a BGP update message to a neighbor, before I send the update message, I will add a authentication key of the message and run a hash across the BGP update message and the authentication key and arrive at a checksum. I can staple the checksum to the end of that BGP update message and send that update message to my neighbor. The receiving neighbor is going to set my checksum aside, add the same authentication key to the update message and run a hash and arrive at a checksum. If my checksum and my neighbor's checksum match, that means two things. That means the BGP update message was not modified in transit, but it also means it was successfully authenticated with a known neighbor. You define the authentication key. It can be up to, if you're this ambitious, 126 characters in length. It can be any ASCII string. If you do put spaces in the authentication key, you have to enclose the authentication key with quotation marks. The authentication key can be defined in the configuration at the global BGP level, so it would affect all BGP groups and all BGP neighbors, or at the BGP group level, so a certain group of BGP peers would use a common authentication key, or even down to the individual neighbor level. Let's take a look at an example. In configuration mode, BGP authentication is configured under the Edit Protocols BGP branch of the configuration hierarchy. And the command is simply set authentication key and then whatever you would like the authentication to be. In this example, we're going to use have a nice day. But remember, you get 126 characters. And in this example, there are no spaces, so I do not have to encapsulate the magic word, the authentication key, in quotes. Now in our demonstration example, we're going to have two routers involved. Router 1 has an IP address, a peer address of 10.1.1.1, and I'm going to configure him to be a BGP peer with 10.1.1.2, a directly connected neighbor. Now it's going to be an external BGP session in this example, but it, it would work either way. These two devices are in different autonomous systems. Now once this configuration has been created and committed, I can use a show BGP neighbor command to verify whether the peers have, or have an established BGP session and also whether the BGP session required authentication. Let's connect to a pair of devices and see how this works. Because of the short amount of time available in a learning byte format, I've already configured these two routers to be BGP peers. I can run a show BGP neighbor command and I can see, let me scroll up a little bit, I can see that 10.1.1.2 has an established BGP peer session with me, 10.1.1.1. I can see the autonomous system numbers of the two peers, but the, the main thing here is that the peers are established, and I also want to focus on the options section because this is where the information is recorded about what BGP options the two peers negotiated when the session was established. 
And in this case, I can see that they, they, you know, there, there is no authentication information here. And, and we're going to turn on authentication. I'm going to enter configuration mode and enable BGP authentication on this peer. And we're going to see some changes in the options field. So let's enter configuration mode now. And I want to change to the edit protocols BGP branch. And I'm going to issue a show command. And I just have the very basic BGP configuration here. I've created a group called demo. Here's the IP address of the neighbor, 10.1.1.2, and, and his autonomous system. And since it's different than my autonomous system number, of course, well, that means it's, it's an eBGP uh, type of session. So I want to add authentication and watch what happens. So I'm going to say set group demo, and all I have to specify is an authentication key I would like to use. Now, let me throw a question mark here. The default way this works is when I specify an authentication key, that key is going to be added to the end of any kind of BGP messages and we're going to run a hash across all of that information. The default hashing algorithm is MD5, but I can change to, for example, AES or, or SHA if, if that's the requirements that I have. I also have the ability to configure what's called an authentication key chain where I can specify multiple authentication keys and a start time for those keys. So I might have the first key be football and we're going to use that key between this pair of neighbors for six months and then at the end of six months I have a new key I would like to start using. And so I can specify a chain of keys and we can do hitless rollovers to new authentication keys. Now in this learning byte, I'm going to try to keep things simple and just do the, the simplest option, uh, set group demo authentication key, and I think our example was have a, and I don't want to put any spaces in there, have a nice day. So I'm going to run show again so we can see the changes. So the authentication key was have a nice day, but you know, it's in, inside of the configuration, we always encrypt you know, variables like that, so they're very secure. And now I'm going to commit this configuration change. Now one thing I want you to understand here is that we've only configured the authentication key on one peer. The other peer does not have the authentication key uh, configured at this moment. So, so let's look at our show BGP neighbor command again. And I'm getting a lot less information. I still have the two peers configured, but they're not in an established state. They're trying to connect. And if I look at my options section, one of the new options is this session requires an authentication key and the router 2 does not have that key configured so the session is not establishing. Remember the goal of this is security. I have an authentication key that's required on this BGP session, my peer doesn't, so the session is not allowed to establish. So I'm going to connect to router 2, enter into configuration mode, and change to the edit protocols BGP branch of the configuration hierarchy and a very similar configuration on, on router 2, but I'm missing the authentication key. So let's add that in. And the thing that's most important here is it actually has to match the key that's configured on my peer. So we'll go with have a nice day. And again, remember the actual authentication key is encrypted in the configuration, so let's do a commit operation. Now, if I think positive, when this commit operation is complete, with the additional authentication key being added now on both sides, we should be able to successfully establish a BGP peer relationship. So now that the commit is done, I'm going to go ahead and run a show BGP neighbor command and let's see if our session has been reestablished. Hey, we're back in business again. Scroll up just a second. I can see these two peers are in the established state. 
and I can see that they negotiated as part of the BGP session establishment process that they would authenticate using an authentication key. So with the authentication key present on both sides, they're allowed to establish a secure authenticated BGP session. In this Learning Byte, we explained how BGP authentication works, and we also configured BGP authentication on a pair of BGP neighbors and verified the results. For more information about Juniper Network's training and certification programs, please visit our website. Thank you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Network's certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.